more favors the early bird. We are waking up before sunrise to join the third separate assault brigade on a combat mission. Just like Horizon's first, the weather is an important factor in warfare. It takes just a small amount of rain to turn the Ukrainian black soil into mud, drawing everything into itself. And you don't want to be stuck, especially on this road. That's why we're going to the zero line, Mad Max style, on a buggy. We are in the trenches with the soldiers of 3rd Separate Assault Brigade that uh, have uh, just recently wiped out some of the Russian positions on the western outskirts of Bakhmut, not so far from here actually. In the last few days it has been heavy raining here and all the roads have turned to mud. So basically because of that all the assault operations are temporarily on hold, although not for long. These soldiers belong to an anti-tank battalion, but right now all enemy tanks are well outside their range. No tanks doesn't mean no enemy. Today they are hunting Russians with FPV suicide drones. This is the enemy tree line in front of us. I usually stand right here with my mask on and fly. First the man sent a reconnaissance drone into the sky. But the weather plays by its own rules. We have to wait for the morning fog to clear. Today's target is an enemy dugout with an anti-drone rifle. Pretty expensive piece of equipment. To hit it with a $500 drone is like winning the lottery. Once the target is confirmed, the FPV drone is ready to fly. The Chinese drone with a Soviet RPG shell, tied with zip ties by a carrying Ukrainian hand. Looks like something from a cyberpunk dystopia. Вітаю, пілоте. Політаємо, згинуть наші вороженьки, як роса на сонці. Запануємо і ми, браття, у своїй сторонці. Двигуни. I clearly saw a dugout. In 3-4 meters the signal was lost, but we have a picture from the drone. The first hit has attracted more targets. The boys react fast and send the second drone right into the same dugout. Here in the command control center, the battalion commander oversees the sector under his responsibility. As a result of the third separate assault brigade's success on the battlefield, the enemy has reduced its attempts to advance south of Bakhmut. But the boys are still hungry. Once the weather stabilizes, they will push forward. We are writing history. Those who came to fight with us set out to make history. And even if they didn't want to, they will. Most men fighting in the Sword Assault Brigade are volunteers. But only those who have passed the complex selection process are accepted in the ranks. This is Sima, Sipa and Shrek, the T-72 tank crew. My crew are all volunteers who came in the morning on the 24th of February. When the news arrived on the 24th, I already knew where to go. So I gathered all my stuff, took the girls home and left. <laughs> For me, it was the same. On the 24th, I joined our volunteer TDF Azov, which was located in Kyiv. Then it was reformatted into the Azov Special Forces Regiment and later the 3rd Assault Brigade. When the crew is not on a mission, their main task is maintenance. Some tanks in their company have been in repair longer than in actual combat. Common problem with machines from the 70s. But when functional, the T-72 is a fierce assault companion. 
It works as a backbone for infantry, giving the men some much appreciated support. The men here say that when their tank is working, nobody's firing back from the enemy side. As a driver mechanic, I love the moment when the gunner shoots, the moment of anticipation and then the shot itself. I literally go, phew. I just love to shoot. <laughs> the third separate assault brigade has been fighting in its various forms since the start of the full-scale invasion. After more than a year of combat, the men are as motivated as ever and ready to help write a new chapter of Ukrainian history. I fucking love it. It's like the movie Fury, the best job in the world.